Hey, welcome to the first installment of a series I'm calling Fangirl 2020X, a false second childhood through the world of the Sega stuff. I want to cut to the chewy candy center of this video right away, so I'll explain that later, but first a word from our sponsor. Pink Lady Apples, because the mother apples ain't shit. So the first thing we're going to be looking at today is Virtual Pinball for the Genesis. Released in 1993 for the Sega Genesis, like I already said, Virtual Pinball came out through EA and was made, I guess, by Bill Budge and those people. Um, so it's kind of in the same vein as Raster Blaster, Pinball Construction Set. We are given this sort of rudimentary situation that you can use to either make your own pinball tables or just play any of the preset ones they already have. There's also like a Game Pro sponsored one, which kind of seems weird, but I guess they had those magazine Lego t-shirts in Silent Hill 3, so I, 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 I don't know what to tell you about the music. Steadman apparently owned this game before I did. You can pick different designs for the features and the backdrop of the table. In this case, it's like a server with a gore setting. Full disclosure, um, I was in the Women's Pinball League here in Pittsburgh. And everything got cancelled because of the pandemic, so I kind of desperately got this to replace that. And um, to say that this isn't a replacement for a real pinball is an understatement. Speaking of decision fatigue, things can get kind of out of hand when you're actually trying to put together your own table. At some point I'm gonna have to sit down and really do this myself, but it, it seems like the kind of thing you need to map out on graph paper before you even go ahead and decide to do one. I mean, rudimentary is the vibe of the day. I don't really know what else to tell you about this. I think I'd rather play Revenge of the Gator if I'm gonna do something this simple. Maybe I didn't give it enough of a chance, maybe my standards were too high, but I mean, as someone who went on to buy Technocop, that's probably not the case. Getting some absolute weird-ass pseudo-Nickelodeon vibes from this Game Pro thing. The blueprint vibe is pretty cool, but also just another coat of paint on a frickin' turd. I shouldn't call it a turd. I mean, it's still pinball. It's better than... Sonic Spinball, or uh, that Jalico thing for the Game Boy with the, the shit that sucks. I just have this weird feeling that once I get around to Crew Ball and uh, Dragon's Fury, I'm not gonna come running back to this. Well, I assume I'll be saying that about Dragon's Fury at least. Next up, Zillion. So technically Zillion is the first non-card Master System game I bought. Yeah! Oh, it's just you, Zillion. That's not modern love you're hearing, that's the theme from Zillion. As far as I know, the only game called Zillion. The tank? Probably not named Zillion. But your mission here is to steal the confidence of the blah blah blah. Anyway, this is based on an anime thing that came out in the mid 80s and I think recently came back out on Blu ray in America. I wonder if they'll ever have the patience for that. <laughs> direct your gourd. Anyway, um, these commands here, you're gonna want to like keep uh, an eye on these if you don't have the manual or just, you know, get the manual like a normal person. A lot of people have trouble with the individual symbols here, but the trick is to just remember they're mere images of regular digits except for the four, which I don't know what that is, and the three kind of looks like an eight, and the eight kind of looks like a zero thingy. Well, whatever. I haven't even talked about the game yet. The good news is Zillion whips ass. You play as JJ and later Champ and Apple of some space force called the White Knights, but actually in the anime they're called the White Nuts, so this is blatant White Nuts erasure. This whole thing has big Metroidvania energy, but to be fair, it actually seems a lot more like Sega's take on Impossible Mission. The Commodore game that I played way too much and will probably play drunk on here in a couple months. 
As you crawl through the different rooms of this underground base, you blow apart trash cans in which you can find French bread or those digits I was telling you about earlier. You need four of those to type into the computer to get the exit to the next room. It's not so tough, but eventually you'll deal with force fields, you'll deal with trash cans that need a stronger gun to get into them, and you'll be, you know, dealing with enemies like any other goddamn game. I should probably mention that the mines in this hallway are one of the worst things you'll ever deal with, ever. Yeah, probably even worse than your taxes. Get it? Because I'm like really old and I made a joke about taxes. When I said this is like a possible mission, I wasn't kidding. In that game, you disable lifts and knock robots out with a computer. In this game, you can disable lifts and knock auto guns out with a computer. I'm way into how this game shows off the Master System's color palette. The weird turquoises and purples and such, it's pretty cool. The controls might be a little stiff, but I mean, that's just a modern gripe. If you just buckle down and get used to the way the game handles, you'll be fine. And I know what you're thinking. Wendy, you need to do your laundry, you smell like a damn cooter. Unfortunately, no. There's no save system, no password system, and you'll have to do this whole thing in one. I'm a bit reluctant to play the sequel because it totally nukes this exploration element in, in favor of just regular action stuff and some driving sequences. Who knows, maybe I'll love it. Right now it's just kind of sitting in the corner of my wife's bedroom. I gotta say though, like if you have a master system at all, Zillion's pretty much required. You need to play this. It's dope. Lastly today, it's Lemmings 2. The tribes. There's a whole bunch of tribes. They're Lemmings. Whatever. You know, I'd be rude not to warn you, get ready to hear this song over and over again until your brains run out your ear. Lemmings 2 doesn't really change the formula from the first Lemmings, except for the fact that the Lemmings all have different new jobs. Just like the first game, you're dealing with mindless little pixelated critters and you gotta give them different jobs to get from the hatch to the exit. And what makes Lemmings 2 Lemmings 2 is the number of tasks you can give Lemmings are quintupled? I don't know, I failed math. The funny thing is, during the course of filming this, I actually beat this level for the first time in months. It was really simple, you just gotta throw those two stupid baseball things in the beginning. I guess that's why these are the sports stages. Let me show you what other outfits these rodents picked this time around. The shadow lemmings are kind of weird. I think they're supposed to be ninjas, but... They also have gray hair, and there's that weird grimacing thing in the bottom, and it's just like some Little Nemo shit going wrong. You get flamethrowers though, that's dope. There is a practice mode where you get to use all of the different lemming skills. You're gonna want to keep the manual too on this one, because none of this shit makes sense. It takes a while to learn all these different creeps and what they do for a living. Behold, the domicile of the polar lemmings, home to a disgruntled polar bear and a kind of normal looking one. As you can see here, I had no idea what I was doing and I was just kind of killing time while the Elgato ran. It's playing Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Nice. I'm aware I sound lazy on this one, but I had a bunch of different captures with sound errors and then this is finally the one that worked. The Highland Lemmings are oddly specific. I guess they're just Scottish? They have red hair, they come out of a barrel, there's a lot of plaid. I guess that's the Loch Ness Monster. I... I mean, I don't really think Scottish is necessarily a, a costume per se, but here we are. This can get addictive and downright aggressive after a couple of pints. I guess the fact that you're walking into another telephone booth shows that they might have been running out of ideas, or perhaps coke. So if you like the first Lemmings game, you're probably not going to hate this one. It just needs a different kind of patience. In the beginning, I wasn't very thrilled, and before long I couldn't put the damn thing down. Mm. Oh shit, okay. So the point of calling it Fangirl 2020X is because growing up all I did was play Nintendo shit, like, obnoxiously until I got sold a PlayStation for drug money. 
and then I bought all the Namco museums. Anyway, um, back in the springtime, I got a Mega SG from Analog, and the idea now is to just sort of see all this Sega stuff with fresh eyes, because I wasn't there when they were new. And eventually I'll get those adapters and you'll see like the Game Gear stuff and the SG-1000 stuff, which I'm really stoked about. And that's the point of this. So you'll see kind of how I went through the timeline of games. There are points where clearly I'm playing too many shooters. So I'm like, well, I need to compensate by buying this completely different style of game. And it's, I don't know. I think it's interesting. You won't. I'm doing a separate video series of just cyberpunk stuff. So just look forward to that some other time. That's all I got this episode. Um, you can like and subscribe and hit the notification thing if you really want to see this stuff as soon as it's done. But um, I'll see you next time. BLM, ACAB, and if you're Teddy Geiger, hit me up.